A collection of tree-covered islands is viewed from high above, a pot of orcas surface in a coastal channel. For thousands of years, my people have shared stories about our relationship with the land, the water, and all living things, including eagles, bears, herring, and salmon. One of our many salmon creation stories tells how, first, the lakes were dug, then a trench to get to the ocean. Finally, salmon were carved out of a dead alder tree. But instead of placing the salmon into the river or the lake, they were placed into the ocean to come to life. They were placed in trust and asked to return every year to nourish our people. Jordan and a bespectacled man stands on a boat as it drifts along the shoreline. Those are razor clams uh, in there compared to these ones. These ones are probably- So how did our ancestors gather this nourishment? How did we trap the salmon that became our way of life? Elroy White, archeologist. A fish trap is a collection of rocks that have been strategically placed on a tidal flat and they were built about two, three feet high with these stones forming at a base and then decreasing as the elevation increased. And as the tide would drop, they would actually get trapped inside the trap wall. So it became a live holding pen. And I would believe you could trap at least 1,000 fish in here, 500 to 1,000 at one time. That's amazing. But just because we could catch 1,000 wouldn't mean we'd take 1,000. Literally, a salmon could get caught in here during its whole time that it was milling about, maybe a month, and yet it wasn't selected. And they only took what was needed. And then they would allow the salmon to escape on their own. So I call these stone fish traps a selective fishery system. So you see, these traps were both effective and selective. Salmon jockey for position in the shallow river water. But when European colonists arrived, we were forced to abandon these traps. Eventually, most were destroyed, and new technology took their place. The stone wall of the fish trap stretches across the water in front of a rocky river beach. On the open water, a fishing boat lets out a net on white buoys. But one thing remained, the importance of fishing to feed our families. Right now, we just made a set with what's called gill netting. So how a gill net works is you have this big drum here, and you set out the net, you scare the fish into the net, and uh, they get trapped, and then you retrieve the net and uh, reel in the salmon. How many fish can you expect to, to catch in a set like this? First set, we got 28 jump, so hopefully we get 30 the next set. Tony Campbell, Bella Bella Community School student, hits up Nation. If we're fishing like this, we could get sockeye, goes. If we're lucky, we'll get spring salmon or a steelhead. We depend on it every year for food. We smoke it, we barbecue it. It's our daily food. The teenage boy grins as he holds up a large salmon. Later, Jordan walks through a community gathering. Salmon fillets are set on wooden frames around campfires. Salmon has always been a part of our diet. We celebrate it, and we're thankful for it. This is Salmon Fest. The kids are here to to learn how our ancestors barbecued fish the traditional way. This is the way it's been done and taught and passed down from generation to generation. And I was taught when I was a young boy at this age, and now, now I'm the teacher. Troy teaches kids. Put a stick in there just to hold the stick open so I can work the fish in there and then work all my sticks under it and on top of the fish. I would prefer the, the skin side to be more sturdy, the stick. The best thing about it is that at the end of all of this, that they're, they're going to be presenting it to the elders. The elders are going to get a good feast from the kids, and it's, this is what it's all about. That's ah, just great. Okay. Why is this such an important event to the community? Salmon have such an important role in who we are as health of people. Um, with the relationship that we have with our ocean and rivers and lakes and with each other as well. And then the language part of it I think is so amazing because language is so important to me. It's always been a, a lifelong goal to be able to fluently speak my language. And when we get it into our fire, it's a gloops meow. <laughs> Say with me, gloops meow. Gloops meow. And in our language, there's another word. Guilas. 
Aquilas are the laws which exist between our people and our homelands. They shape our every interaction between human beings and between the natural and supernatural world. These laws are based upon principles of respect and reciprocity. We take care of our resources so that our resources can take care of us. Salmon are super important because they come back every year to nourish us and then also we have a responsibility as people to take care of the ocean and the lakes and the rivers to ensure that the salmon have something to come back to. Just like the salmon came back every year, like a gift into our ancient stone traps. Jordan and Elroy walk on the rocky beach. Back in the day when the salmon was so plentiful, they would literally line up this whole bay from shoreline to shoreline. And the elders had always told me that they could run across a bay on the back of a salmon and not get their feet wet. So it's an exaggeration, of course, but it, nowadays we're lucky if we can we see a school of 500. Salmon swim in the fast-flowing river. The salmon is a gift to our people, and we have to care for them and look after them. And they don't do it just for their own generation, it's for future generations. A girl leaps off a swing, soaring through the air before landing in the gravel. She smiles proudly. 